Greetings folks. Today we're going to look at a simulation of an op-amp based integrator and differentiator. And here's our circuit. And what we have here are the integrator and the differentiator circuits we looked at in the integrator and differentiator videos. Yay! I've chosen a couple of nice BiFET op-amps here, some TL071s for each of these. Decent speed, 15 volt power supply as you can see. And just to recall what we had, the uh, integrator, input resistor 5K, capacitor 20 nanofarad, then the uh, F-low initiator to, to help minimize the DC offset issues and so forth. Um, 100K for that. And then on the differentiator side, same values, 20 nanofarad, 5K, and a 1 nanofarad for the CF, which is going to produce the F high. Now, because these are the same values, this differentiator should essentially undo what the integrator did, because the coefficients, the RC coefficients, are the same. So whatever we throw in here, we should ideally get the same exact thing out here. Any differences that we see are largely caused by the non-ideal effects of these devices. In other words, things like slew rate, uh, rise time, gain bandwidth product, that sort of thing. So we're going to throw in the uh, half volt peak square wave at one kilohertz that we used um, on those examples. So we've got a one volt peak to peak square wave coming in. And you might recall after integration, this should turn into a triangle wave. And the triangle wave, also at one kilohertz, should have about a two and a half volt peak to peak signal. Now we took that same signal and we ran it into the differentiator. And um, we did in fact get the half volt square wave, half volt peak square wave. So let's see what in fact we get out of this little beastie. So we're going to come up here and grab our transient analysis. And we're going to delay this a little bit because without this delay, you know, when it starts up, those caps have to charge and discharge and get to a steady state case. So I'm delaying them for a few cycles. Right? We're going to start at 10 milliseconds, go to 12. So at a one kilohertz input frequency, you know, we're going to see two output cycles. And uh, since I have the excitation in here, we should see three waveforms, the input square wave, this hopefully triangle wave from the integrator, and a square wave for the differentiator, which should look just like the input. Okay. Now let's go change a color here because those two colors are pretty close. So I'm going to change this to blue. Oh, that's so much better. And let's get the um, legend in here. Okay, so the blue obviously is our square wave coming in. And we can see you know, here's the half volt peak as expected. Right, and here's our time base down here, one millisecond, so one kilohertz, everything looks good. The green is the output of the integrator. So as we said, this should be a triangle wave. Clearly it is. And it should be about two and a half uh, volts peak to peak, about one and a quarter peak. Um, what we're seeing here is the right peak to peak value. However, we do have a small DC offset in it. You can see that the positive peak is a little bit higher than the corresponding negative peak. Um, so this is a little over a volt and a quarter. This is a little under. But the total span from here to here is just about two and a half volts. So that's looking pretty good. And then when we look at the differentiator, the sort of maroonish wave, sh uh, wave shape, and that should be identical to the input. And what we are seeing is a little bit of an effect here on the rise and fall times. That would be expected. And then this sort of tilting of the top is a low frequency limitation. Um, but the total peak to peak change, right, is what we would expect. It's a volt. You can see that, um, you know, this is starting up a little bit higher and then it's, this is shooting up a little bit higher. So if you measure from here to here, you are in fact going to get that one volt. So within the, you know, ideal performance of the op amps themselves, we have a pretty good output. And again, you know, we're talking about something with a 
fairly wide range of, of frequencies, right? Remember, you know, a square wave is consisting of uh, this infinite series of sine waves at um, odd harmonics, and a similar sort of thing for a triangle wave. So, you know, those op amps are necessarily bandwidth limited. They're not perfect, um, but we are getting a pretty nice result out of here. Okay, there you have it.